I don't know if there's a more beautiful scene than this. This is incredible. Day one. Mother bear nursing her two cubs. Wow. The maternal instinct of mother bears with their little cubs. No different than humans. Today. And 12 hours of snowmobiling <laughs> to arrive to paradise. David, what's going on here? We got a big snowbank. Uh, there was a polar bear inside it. <laughs> Check this out, man. From wolf tracks at our front door, right to, you ain't gonna believe this, but check that out. <laughs> First off, big snowbank. Second off, Look at that, polar bear tracks, right in camp, right on David's bed. It's going to be an adventure. That was a good sleep, but I don't like what I hear outside. Sounds like a blizzard. And this is the time of day when nature calls. Now we head over here and we jump over the fence safely right on and there's my pooing rock over there go as fast as you can get the job done because otherwise things can freeze up daddy oh that's cold thank god there's no polar bears well that's living in the arctic woohoo a bit of a blizzardy day, so David is making us bannock. Mm, my favorite. A nice winter days. It keeps you warm while you're out there. David, what else does bannock help with? Uh, it, it, after after have been eating it, makes you see be, uh, bigger bears and more bears. You see. Oh, you see more bears with bannock. Yeah. Check out this morsel of love. Mmm, still steaming. Yum, yum. Gotta love David's bannock. Mmm, mmm, mmm. See, we're gonna cross here onto this island. And uh, the tide goes up and down underneath the ocean, of course, and creates these lines. And right there, you could actually potentially go right through into the ocean. So David's gonna check to see if we can cross somewhere safely. Water all there? <laughs> So don't step there. Don't, don't step there, otherwise. Where can I step? How about here? Safe over from here. <laughs> you can step to, to this one. Oh yeah, okay. Here we go. Take Not into the ocean, woo! <laughs> That's kind of fun. Mm. If you don't, walrus, they're gonna get at you. <laughs> they're waiting under. Here we go. Up to glass at the top of a hill. I'm out of shape. I'll admit it. Southern lifestyle. Fried chicken. Burgers. Too many potato chips. Kill you, man. All for this view up here. Wow. We go up to the tops of these hills because we can see for miles, as you can see. And hopefully... We find bears. You know, you sit here in glass and you think, oh, you can see a polar bear. Um, you know, no problem. But uh, everything that looks like a shadow, every little piece of ice out there almost looks like a polar bear, but it's the fact that they're yellow. <laughs> That's the only way you can tell that there's a bear out on the ice. 
Now a polar bear's fur is actually a hollow tube and it directs sunlight down to their black skin. Why they have that yellow color? Maybe a little bit of dirt over time, maybe an older bear. Um, but yeah, that's the only way that you can tell that uh, there's a polar bear out on the ice there. There you can see where a polar bear den for a day and had a beautiful sleep and slid down the hill to come back to the Arctic Ocean ice. Here you see polar bear tracks, a small guy on the left, a big guy in the middle, and well, my size 14 boot beside his. You can tell they have big feet. You know what they say about a guy with big feet? David, what do they say? They are so slow runners. <laughs> they are so Male polar bears are the largest terrestrial carnivore on Earth. Their average weight, 800 kilograms. Why such a large bear? Well, the intense need to be able to outcompete all other male bears during breeding season. Females only breed every third year. So when you put that into perspective, there's three males for every female. Okay, here you can see where there's some polar bear activity. They had dug up a seal's birthing lair. You can see the holes here and there. This is quite old already with polar bear tracks that are right there. Now these seal birthing lairs, they come up from underneath the ocean and the seals will dig and they'll create a little uh, cavity inside where they'll have their young. And the polar bears will come out and sniff these and they'll find them. And then they'll crash down and try to capture the little seal pup. This is what the polar bears hunt for, the ring seal. Now, mother bears coming to the ocean from their dens coordinate with the time when these little pups are being born. Adult seals, of course, can dive for 45 minutes and up to 300 feet. But it's these little pups that cannot escape if a polar bear digs down and tries to capture them. What a beautiful day in the Arctic. Wow, just love it. Like nothing you can ever imagine. It takes your breath away, this wind. Oh, and the bears will be out in drones on the Arctic Ocean ice. We're heading out shortly to go find them. They just love this weather too. Gotta love the Arctic. Come and come out there, but we can't go. Why can't we go, David? Because it's too windy and too hard to see the ground. Talk about cold weather. Look at this Arctic air. All this Amazing. Gotta love it. That was awesome. I just got some great shots of an Arctic hare. It's kind of blizzarding out here. My fingers are froze, so cold. This is the Arctic though. It's awesome. Woohoo! Well, we just came back to camp from glassing and as you can tell, the bear fence worked again. We had a bear in camp. And there's the solar panel. He must have got a little shock. Thank goodness for the bear fence. What a ridiculous day today, you know. We started off with uh, blizzardy weather. Mother bear out there with his cubs. You know, didn't want to be famous. That's fine. Eventually the, the sky cleared up and we're leaving camp and a bear walks out right out in the bay here. <laughs> Who's coming to hunt us? This bear right here. No question about it. He's coming to check out what we're all about and if we're potentially lunch. Got some good photos of him. Then we headed out a little further and we saw this male bear hunting and we shut off the snowmobiles and waited for him. And oh, lo and behold, if he didn't pick me and started chasing after me and I was holding my 800 millimeter lens and driving with one hand and hit a nice chunk and fell off. 
Yeah, I winged myself. Luckily, David came between me and the bear and stopped his snowmobile and waving his hands up and down and the bear walked off. But these young males, I mean, they'll hunt you. They, they'll hunt you. They just, they've got no fear. Tonight, we had a big male bear with his girlfriend sleeping on the ice, sleeping. No stress, all calm, everybody relaxed and, and all good. And, uh, you know, at sunset, I, I hoped that he would get up and he got up for amazing photos at sunset. You know, it just makes it worth it all. Okay, what the heck is going on here? Well, when the weather's so cold and you leave your camera out at night for uh, time-lapse photography and you wake up in the morning to find that the housing is cracked because it was so cold and you know that <laughs> there's no Nikon service department nearby, you got uh, not too many choices but to figure out how to fix your lens that's very important to you. So what did we do? We tied a rope around this thing to keep the lens up against the ho the body. It's crazy, but believe it or not, I think I got some good photos. Okay, I've seen some neat phenomena in my life, but check this out. This has got sun dogs with double sun dogs, and the ring goes all the way around as well in the sky. This is crazy. Just a little bit of ice up in the air is creating this phenomena. Wow. Hey, I know this might sound crazy, but it's been too cold today for even polar bears. <laughs> no word of a lie. The wind is so strong today. It's died down now that it's close to sunset, but David and I just froze all day. I have always wanted to capture a polar bear in the wild capturing a seal and feeding on it. This is awesome. I didn't see this bear capture it, but wow, what a scene of nature. I know it's not the prettiest part of nature, but this is wild in the Arctic. Ooh wow. This is so awesome right now. Look at what's going on here. This bear is going to check out that other bear. And that other bear has a kill. And he already chased him off once. And this bear was coming to check us out, but he got close and he's like, well, he wants nothing to do with us. I was happy about that. This is going to get interesting again. Ooh, wow. This is crazy. That was a heck of a trip. Yeah. Woo! Thank Woo. you, man. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your best memory of the trip? Uh, seeing that big bear eating the seal was my best time to see it. Wow. Have you ever seen a bear eating a seal before? Yeah, I have seen, but double seal, that's my first. Wow. Yeah, that was awesome. You know, my best memory is... When we had that bear hunting us. Oh yeah. In the rough ice. Mm -hmm. And you were ahead of me with the Comatech. And I was behind him like, David, get going, get going, get going. And, and you were driving so slow because you didn't want me to yeah. tip. Yeah. And as soon as it got open, I raced it. <laughs> Today though was pretty good too. Oh yeah. You know, what is it? We have Bannock. What happens? And we see uh, moms and cubs. Moms and cubs.
say happy Earth Day. It's my favorite day of the year. Of course, I love the Earth and all that it has to, to offer. Reflecting on this trip of polar bears, I mean, it was fabulous again. These bears are, are so majestic, so uh, such an incredible species. We saw mother bears with their little cubs, you know, the maternity, the love that she has, the protection she has, incredible. We saw big bears hunting seals, capturing seals. We saw bears that came up empty-handed when they got seals, so we're trying to get seals. You know, it was a tough trip in some aspects in terms of, of some things that happened. Uh, having some hunters come in and hunt a polar bear, which was their, their legal right, they had a tag. And of course, people up here hunt polar bears, they have for thousands of years. You know, thousands of years though, uh, they typically used polar bear to eat it. They made their clothing. Now, you know, for the most part, it's it's about the hide because they fetch so much money, ten to to fifteen thousand dollars. I'm not against traditional hunting and such. I, I felt really bad for that polar bear. I know that there's there's a healthy population of polar bears in Canada right now, but uh, it, it seemed non necessary just for just for the hide of a bear. I guess uh, you know. I had to reflect on myself though and think about the things that I do. That was a direct impact on a polar bear, you know, it, it losing its life. But me traveling all the way from the south up here on airplanes, me living my life down south, I mean there's a lot of things that I do indirectly that impact this Arctic Ocean ice. And that ice is so important to the survival of these polar bears. Without it, they will not survive. So. If global climate change is, is continuing to happen and, and the Earth's temperature continues to rise, we won't have polar bears. So I need to drive less. I need to, to not consume as much. Walk down to the corner store as opposed to get in my vehicle. You know, indirectly, there's all kinds of things that, that I do as a person that impact this environment up here. So I have to think on that. As sad as I was to see that polar bear, you know, I'm sure that my actions haven't done well for these guys either. So I encourage everybody on Earth Day to, to think about Mother Nature. Think about something maybe you can do to help out. Uh, keep loving Mother Nature. Keep respecting her. And, uh, you know, thanks thanks for uh, for caring about, about this beautiful planet. Awesome.